why Dr. Samar Basak for okay. his talk on fungal graditis. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh and Dr. Namrata for having me here. And uh, I'll be talking fungal keratitis standard uh, medical therapy, interstromal and intracameral injection. I do not have any financial interest to disclose. You see that most of the fungal keratitis is reported from tertiary centers and they are predominantly fungal or mixed. In tertiary level, standard of treatment is fairly straightforward because the microbiology workup is there. On the other hand, in small clinic and most they are the primary cases and many situations the treatment is empirical. So, but empirical management you must have more knowledge than you are having microbiology backup. So, and you, you need to knowledge about the clinical presentation of different types of keratitis, different pictures of different fungus, geographical distribution, especially in India, we know that aspergillus is more common in Eastern and Northern India. Fusarium is more common in South India than urban versus rural population. And also, you know, the predisposing factor like paddy seed or paddy related injury, aspergillus is common, whereas onion related injury, Fusarium is common. So everything should be kept in mind before starting empirical management. And sensitivity pattern might be different in different parts of the country. You have to remember all those. So, you start empirical treatment, be rational, see for 48 to 72 hours. If it is not responding, refer to a specialist who have those facility of microbiology workup and other supports. So AIOS guidelines are there, size, shape, location, depth, and presence of hypopion or not. And primarily, if you want to do one test microbiology, please do KOH preparation and see yourself under the microscope, you can actually group them differently. There are many antifungals available, pollins and azole. We know that the natamycin and amphotericin B both are available in our country, but amphotericin B you have to prepare yourself. Azole, boriconazole is available in our country, but other uh, azoles are available in the form of tablet or injections. So there are different sensitivity pattern is there and we know that amphotericin B is more sensitive for aspergillus or yeast kind, whereas natamycin is mostly sensitive for all. Then key points to remember that all available antifungals are fungistatic, not fungicidal. Natamycin is the drug of choice in filamentous keratitis, especially against fusarium. And due to poor penetration, it is only effective in non-severe, more superficial keratitis. Amphotericin B is effective for candida and aspergillus. Fluconazole also shows activity against candida species. Role of scraping is there. On first visit, it is a must. Repeat scraping depending upon the response, help in decreasing microbial load. It also helps in penetrating the topical antifungal, but for dematiceous fungus, probably you would need to uh, scrape the ulcer on each visit, maybe on alternate day or on a daily basis. Monotherapy, depending upon the size, shape, hypopian of the ulcer, so natamycin or MFOB is the choice, cycloplegic antibiotic. And depending upon the response, initially, uh, you give one hourly as Dr. Namrata said, even the sleeping hours, you try to motivate the patient, then review initially on alternate day or third day, then weekly, and depending upon the response, you, you, you tapering the dose or may, may start combination therapy. The MART trial has shown that, that boriconazole should not be used as a monotherapy, uh, so that has been proved. Again, the in vitro studies showed that the natamycin and boriconazole in combination are a little bit more effective in fusarium species, but not in vivo. Combination therapy for one eye, more than five millimeter, endothelial plaque, sclerotin involvement, maybe after 10 to 14 days when you uh, think that it is not effective. But amphotericin B and natamycin are not synergistic in vitro. A role of systemic antifungal is there where limbus is involved, one-eyed patient, sclera is involved, 
And in case of perforated, you can have uh, oral fluconazole, etraconazole, boriconazole is uh, uh, doubtful and it is too toxic and also too expensive. Uh, systemic toxicity of all antifungal should be kept in mind. Matral 2 also showed that uh, uh, there is no uh, beneficial effect if you add oral voriconazole to your treatment, and, but uh, uh, fusarium keratitis may be benefited from oral voriconazole uh, to topical. There is only, but ultimate outcome, there is not much difference. How long is to continue antifungal? The dictum is just just the ulcer, but the rule of thumb is, is continue the, your treatment for another two weeks in tapering dose, and ask the patient to come because some small high P or anything maybe you may not see it may be in the angle of the anterior chamber and see for any recurrence after two weeks then you cure healing. Then targeted therapy, intracameral, intrastromal, various things are uh, described. You just remove it, the plaque and the hypopion and uh, you give intracameral like amphotericin B intrastromal amphotericin B or intracameral, various combination, but the reports are all anecdotal. So you, you give injection in the clear zone surrounding the ulcer, and uh, many, many studies are there, indication that it is mainly for endothelial plug where the superficial stroma, angiostroma is absolutely fine. There are many anecdotal reports. Some says it is good, some says it is not good, but when there is no thing, nothing in your hand, you may try, but randomized control trial by Namrata and uh, her group showed that intracameral amphotericin doesn't offer any benefit over topical antifungal therapy when performed alone or associated with drainage or hypopion. So, but we have tried, sometimes it worked. Then again, intracameral boriconazole uh, people are trying, but you must remember the half-life of intracameral voriconazole. It is only 22 minutes inside the eye, so you need to repeat every day probably. So uh, there are also, again, anecdotal report. Some people are saying there are, uh, uh, these are effective. Combination of intrastromal uh, uh, amphotericin B and voriconazole. Uh, uh, Amphotericin B is sometimes effective and maintained there for uh, up to seven days, so we may need to refeed it. And then it, uh, it is for deep keratitis also, people, a lot of reports are there. And again, the uh, topical versus intrastromal voriconazole, again, <laughs> by Namrata and her group says that uh, intrastromal voriconazole didn't provide additional benefit over topical voriconazole. This is one of the case we treated with intracameral amphobi with intrastromal voriconazole long time back. Uh, so two doses after five days and this uh, typical uh, deep endoexudates cleared up very nicely. So in summary, this study says that all are anecdotal but complications are there. You must remember UVIT secondary glaucoma and iris neovascularization and subsequently bleeding during therapeutic PK. And there is uh, uh, no advantage of intrastromal voriconazole. And there are also uh, studies like in DMEC or DALC when there is uh, DMEC or DSEC where is there is uh, uh, deep uh, stromal, then uh, in the interface you may try to give stab incision and little bit of voriconazole. And uh, there are reports that it may be effective. So it may you may try it. The THT protocol, this is available in Cornea Journal. You must see it totally by Namrata and her group, the topical, systemic, and targeted therapy. So all the algorithm is there, when to give, when not to give. And I think that this, this is wonderful uh, algorithm. You must all follow this. So take-home message is timely standard medical treatment is the key to success in most cases of fungal keratitis. For smaller superficial ulcer, monotherapy with natamycin mostly and maybe amphotericin B. Natamycin is most effective in fusarium. Amphotericin B is effective in aspergillus and candida. Boriconazole is less effective in fusarium species. Combination therapy with pollen and azole may have synergistic effect. 
Intracameral lymphobe may have value in deep keratitis with endoexudate, and intrastromal voriconazole does have role in some of the candida infection where the, in the interface kind of infection, but not in filamentous fungus. Thank you very much for your patience waiting. Uh, thank you for that wonderful overview. Uh, any questions? Is there any role of uh, intrastomal voriconazole in full thickness uh, uh, keratitis? Sorry? Is there uh, any role of intrastomal voriconazole in case of the cornea is involved in full thickness? Full thickness cornea involvement with the full thickness infiltrate in the cornea and uh, is there any role of... Uh, so yeah. Fungal keratitis, yeah. Fungal keratitis. Full thickness intrastromal voriconazole. No, no. In case of full thickness infiltrate of fungal keratitis, is there any role of voricona intrastromal voriconazole? In yes, ah, there is yes. a role because the, your topical yeah. antifungals do not penetrate yeah. uh, uh, well. So even if you give an injection which is at the level of say 70% or 60%, then some of it would penetrate. So there is a role of uh, uh, intrastromal voriconazole there also. So uh, any ch uh, anything like uh, depth of the in injection, any change in depth, depth of infection, uh, injection? So in depth the of the injection would change. It, it would change. And of course, like when you're giving... So, so no, the, the, the causative organism is very important in this case. If it is like uh, candida, you uh, always try to give in but it is a proved fusarium. Probably your, all this injection will not help to, uh, I mean, rather than you, 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 you can give uh, systemic other azole group because uh, voriconazole is too expensive and too toxic. Actually, so that, that is so my view, actually. So actually, his question is that what will be the depth of... So uh, depth of injection, 75%, yeah. 60 uh, to 75% depth, percent percent depth you yeah. can, but you must be very careful in post... Yeah. Keratoplasty, you are telling now uh, without keratoplasty. If it is a post keratoplasty, you have to be very careful about the host graft so, junction and so, all these things. Yeah, so when you are giving these injections, you have to give in three to five hemimeridians, preferably five to six hemimeridians, from an area which is relatively clear, not thinned out area because you might cause a perforation there. And the, the uh, reflex of that is something like the reflex of a phaco wound when you hydrate. So you know that it is there and that fluid wave you can actually see. So in five to six meridians, you can give this. And if you have to repeat, then you repeat after 72 hours. Okay. And you can give about four injections. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. 72 Namaste. hours apart. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. Uh,